can't stop the train, baby. Woo! So 34 of the Losers Bracket. Today we are going to talk a lot about the World Cyber Games, USA Nationals. Seemed like to be an exciting event. Jason, it's my understanding we've got some great guests tonight. You want to tell everybody who we're going to be talking to today? Sure thing. First things first, we're going to be bringing in the winner of the Asphalt 5 event at the Nationals. His name is Shidosha. He'll be joining us very shortly. We've also got our very own Guitar Hero competitor, VV Brock, to join us. And just a little bit later, we'll be bringing in VV Mix as well. So first things first, we've got the winner of the Asphalt 5 event at the WCG Nationals with us. His name is Shadosha. Please welcome him to the show. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? Can't complain. We are outstanding. Thank you. Welcome to the show. <laughs> appreciate it. Appreciate it. So I've got to ask, how does it feel? I know we had Golden Boy on the show a few weeks ago. He was talking to us about winning the mobile challenge in New York. And now I just yeah. heard that you just beat him out at the last second here in LA for the championship. Tell us about the match. Tell us about the event. How does it feel to be a part of team USA? Well, before I get on that, I got to say much love to my man, golden boy. Um, he definitely gave me a run for my money uh, throughout New York um, into LA. A uh, little quick backstory. Golden Boy had me beaten by 500 points exactly to qualify, you know, to get first place. And, I mean, you know, wonderful effort. And so I told him, listen, I have to run it back in L.A. So I definitely took that grudge with me over to L.A., even heard of what he had to say in his past interview. And, uh, you know, this just, just wrecked shop. You know, I, I brought what I could to the table and let this man know that, you know, there's more than just one threat out there for him. So, yeah, that's about it. So tell everybody what you won, for those that may not be aware. And tell us uh... – your advancement sort of to that point, who was your toughest challenge, and then what did you walk away uh, winning at this event? Okay, um, well, to get started first, I, I definitely got a 1000 bucks and a really, really big check to take on the airplane with me. That was so much fun. Alongside that, uh, uh, my biggest threats there, there, was, there were a few people. Um, two of the big ones I should name is... Um, of course, Golden Boy, obviously, you know, he, he was he was winning all day. He was just enjoying himself. And um, another one would be a, um, a hidden talent out there known as Cali North. You know, he was a quiet guy, a mellow guy. He played his you know, he played his position in the background. But, uh, you know, once he got on stage and he played his game, he just wrecked shop. I was fortunate enough not to have to play him because I'm not going to lie. I think if I played Cali North, he probably would have beaten me. That is really kind of you to say that. And here I go picking on him saying that they're going to try to get in whatever free event they can. But mm -hmm. that's really well said, well said. So you walk away with $1,000. Tell us how you first heard about Asphalt 5, because obviously you competed in New York. And mm -hmm. uh, talk to Golden Boy about how he heard about it. Tell me how you first heard about the Samsung Challenge in New York that got you on this path. Uh, well, usually I do shout casting and commentary. I'm a freelance kind of person. And um, so I always have like a newsletter or something of all the events that come up. And one of them was the mobile challenge. Now, I didn't, you know, I didn't get the opportunity to shout cast that they didn't need it. But I, I was curious to see what was going on there, you know, just because I never got an opportunity to see a mobile game run. And I was like, huh, well, this is like um, another game I played on the Xbox called uh, Sega All-Stars Race. And it, it just feels like the same game. So, you know, I, I'm a really big fan of arcade racing games, even though that's not my main thing. So, you know, I just dumped, jumped on board, and I just wanted to, you know, feel out how the game ran. And <laughs> luckily, I managed to get myself a spot on the board. I was like, wow. So, you know, I just kind of ran with it from there, and that's about it. So tell us what you did to prepare differently for the Nationals compared to running up to the New York event. Well, nothing really different, I guess. I I was around there more often. I didn't play as much as everybody else did. I really watched, and I also, you know, I had a chance to do some shout casting and commentary there. So even though I didn't play, I really got the opportunity to see everybody else's play style and see what they had to offer, you know, what kind of 
thing, um, you know, op- options and tools they were bringing to the table. Everything I saw, it's just, it was nothing I was really afraid of. I just felt like, oh, well, I know how to do that or I know how to beat that. And I just kind of felt out options not to use, you know, um, like I, I didn't use their options. I just used my own, like, you know, counter options. And fortunately it worked out and I just ran from there and I got first place. Oh, well, once again, congratulations. Now, just a second ago, you said, that's not my normal thing. So I'm assuming that you have, I guess you say, your your specialty lies with other games. For those who might not know who you are, give us a little bit of your background in gaming. What have you played in the past? What have you done competitively? Tell us a little bit about you. Who is Shadosha? All right. Well, that's an easy one to answer. I am um, a Sega junkie. I, I love Sega games. I grew up on Sega. I definitely played Nintendo, but, you know, I, I came up on arcade games and Sega games. I really wanted to get competitive in shooters. My very first um, game that I thought about playing competitively was um, Rainbow Six. I had fun in that, but unfortunately the scene died out really fast by the time I got comfortable with it. So I moved on to fighting games. Dead or Alive was a favorite of mine, and I got an opportunity to meet um a bunch of players from uh, the CGS back when that was a very popular show out. And then from there, you know, um, I got I guess I got kind of tired of Dead or Alive and I moved on to Virtual Fighter. And I've been sticking with Virtual Fighter ever since. But um, because, you know, that game died out as well and I just needed an opportunity to sit back and play casually. I, you know, I tried out other games in various genres and, you know, I just so happened to land my um, hands on a really nice cell phone that had Asphalt 5 on it. And, uh, you know, I ran with it from there. But uh, for the most part, I'm a gamer, but I'm more known for doing shout casting, commentary, things of that nature. I'm what you would call, you know, the number one stream monster. There's not one time where you haven't seen some guy with a shirt on his head on the microphone at one of your favorite events. So, you know, that's a little bit about me. Now that you're going to be representing the United States at the world finals coming up, now you've got a whole different group of competitors because, as I understand, Mobile games are pretty popular in Southeast Asia. Have you been able to sort of scout out or know much about your competitors? And if you do, can you share a little bit about how you're preparing and what you know? Well, I've done a small amount of research, and I'm glad you brought that up because earlier I said I'm a little bit shaken up, and that's the reason why I just got an opportunity to check my bracket, and I have the luxury of playing South Korea and Singapore. So, you know, I really have to dig deep to find out some strats um, involving them. I know that when they did the qualifying run, I saw their points, and it was really high. I think about 140,000, and that was in their own Samsung Mobile Challenge. But as far as their racing abilities and strategies are concerned, um, you know, there, there's no videos online, and I don't have any buddies that were hanging out in Korea. So I'm just going to have to um, play it by ear and wing it as soon as I get the opportunity to see them. I mean, they are in my bracket. I have to face them first, and I don't want to get eliminated early in the game. So you know, I'm going to have to come forth and bring it. After Asphalt 5 and the WCG World Finals are over, and we wish you the best of luck, what does your future hold? What do you, What's your next thing in gaming for you? Well, gaming never stops for me. You know, this is just, you know, believe it or not, I hate to sound, you know, pompous or anything, but this is just an, another day in the life of a dude with a shirt on his head. So uh, I'm just going to keep on moving forward, doing what I do best, playing video games, shoutcasting, commentary. You know, I'll probably cover another one of you guys' events. You never know. So... I mean, I'm going to keep continuing forward, pressing forward, and um, you know, promoting my craft, pretty much. When you think of shoutcasters, are there any shoutcasters you look up to or you feel are really, really good that you're like, you know what, I want to be where that person is? There aren't too many that come to mind. I will say that there are a bunch that I have the opportunity to, to be around. You know, you know, much love to, to DJ Wee. He's always doing his thing. My friend Rivington, he's, he's an excellent shoutcaster. He just has that voice. You know, I'm always around Susie as well. He's another guy that, you know, got me into this. So, you know, those are the three people I'm always around, and they just, they do they do whatever they can to help me move forward. So, you know, those are the ones I appreciate the most. In an ideal world, if you were to choose a career, would you like to make gaming shoutcasting your professional life? Yeah, you know what? I honestly probably would. I think, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I would. I love to travel. It's something I love to do. I love gaming and, you know, the opportunity to do both at the same time is just a luxury I enjoy. So long as I'm able to take my family alongside me, I wouldn't give it up for the world. 
Awesome. Well, I definitely want to thank you for coming on the show, my man. Uh, I really do appreciate it. I know that a lot of the people that listen to the show are really looking forward to hearing from the mobile winner because that is something that we don't normally see in the mainstream as often. So it's really cool to hear from the people that are playing these games. So once again, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, no problem. Another thing I wanted to add, I mean, if anybody wants to get in touch with me, I'm easy to access, twitter.com slash Adosha. You guys just found me, so you guys know how to reach me. Anybody that wants to, you know, play online, I play casual games, so if they want to do that, just hit me up. Big thank you to WCG for doing what they can and getting us out there, and um, I really appreciate, you know, everything they've done. And, uh, well, just look out for the dude with the shirt on his head, you know, and that's pretty much it. That's about all I have to say. Second guest of the night, our very own VVV Mix, coming back to join us, telling us about his experiences at the Nationals playing FIFA. Mix, welcome back to the Losers Bracket. Hey, what's up, guys? It's nice to be on the show again. So how was it? That was a tough one. What a final. Well, the overall uh, performance wasn't bad, I guess, with second place. But uh, the final, I don't think I've ever dominated someone in every game and still had such, I guess, bad luck. I outshot, outpossessed everything, every game. I lost, like, a couple in overtime, one in PKs, and one 3-2, I think, in regular time. But that's, that's how it went down. So you sound a little bit down about that. That was very disappointing, I imagine. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of a downer because I've been, like, I guess I've gotten second now, like, three times in WCG Nationals and all to three different people. And this one, I can pretty much proudly say that I was the better player. And it, I didn't play, like, nervous or nutted up or anything like that. I mean, I, I brought my A game. I just... <laughs> It didn't go in my favor at the end of the day. Wow. That's the story of any given Sunday, you know, that on any given day, just a little bit of a break in the other person's direction, and the better player does not emerge. But I guess at the end of the day, that's what makes sports interesting. Tell us a little bit about your opponent, though. Who was he? And give us your sort of feel of that finals match. Well, for anyone who doesn't know uh, Cregan BG, uh, he's a really well-known uh, FIFA player in the in the U.S., He's been in the CGS for a couple years. He's a franchise player there. He won WCG National in 2007, and he's placed the highest ever for an American in a world final at fifth at a WCG world final in Seattle, actually. The last two years, I've knocked him out of the, the competition. Both times he placed third, and I placed right above him. From what I heard recently, I believe that he was training with some of the Bulgarians overseas, correct? And I've heard that they're pretty dominant this year in the FIFA area, would you attribute that to his performance or, you know, did that really make too much of a difference? What are your thoughts? Well, for anyone who doesn't know Cregan, yeah, he's definitely Bulgarian before he is American, but he definitely, he lives over here, he lives right over there, I want to say in Jersey, maybe New York, right in that region. It definitely was a huge factor, most likely this year, because Bulgaria as a country has been winning everything. They beat Germany in the Nations Cup, which is unheard of. Germany hasn't lost that competition in like five, six years. And in the SEC that happened right before the WCG National, that's the Samsung European Challenge for anyone who doesn't know. Bulgaria also placed second there, so uh, their individual players have been all over the place this year. Can you help me understand, and maybe for our audience who isn't familiar with FIFA on the PC, you know, a lot of games being able to play with European players can sometimes be difficult because of lag and issues like that. How does it work for FIFA? So how does his connection with the Bulgarians help his game so that we can all understand? Well, with FIFA, a lot of times on the PC, it's not necessarily about having the best connection, but learning the tricks. So if the Bulgarians this year have an advantage over a lot of countries, which has been proven they do, that means they probably have a few of their own little bugs and uh, glitches and mistakes they found in the game, and they're keeping it within their little group. So he had... He has an advantage because they're showing him because he's Bulgarian and he's able to take that to the national. There's definitely a couple of, I guess, long passes and little tricks that he had that were different from everyone else in the competition at the national. In this final match, you still were able to have greater possession time of the ball and also outshoot him. What do you think? Was it just bad breaks? Was it something about what he may have learned playing with the Bulgarians? What do you think is the the story there well he took his opportunities well I'm definitely not going to take that away from him but uh i mean when you out shoot someone 24 to like eight like in the finals it was really that bad it was like 24 to eight most games on fifa pc only have eight to ten shots involved on each side so to totally double off someone's shots and lose the game is shocking it just doesn't happen it's 
it's really rare. So what is next for you upcoming in the next few months for tournaments? Well, this is pretty much close to the end before FIFA 11 comes out. There's a possibility that I'll end up at the WCG World Final, but I mean, I wouldn't get my hopes up about it. You never know if they're going to take another spot for the U.S. or not. There's a big tournament coming up for IESF where I should get invited, I feel like, and it takes place in Korea, but I might have to qualify. It's actually in FIFA Online, too, but they're going to run the qualifiers in FIFA 2010 on the PC. So, I mean, it's already been proven that I'm top two and they have two spots, so I think they should definitely take me without without a doubt, but if he wants to run qualifiers, then it's a toss-up. Online is totally different from LAN. Definitely a drastic change, so we'll see what happens. Now, you mentioned with FIFA 11 coming out, because a lot of these sports games nowadays play differently each year. How do you go about preparing once FIFA 11 comes out for tournaments regarding that game? Well, I haven't really looked into FIFA 11 at all this year yet, because I'm still playing FIFA 10, and if you mix and match games, I can guarantee that it will throw off your gameplay in one or the other. I want to say that FIFA 11 comes out maybe October, maybe September, late September, early October. I'm not sure 100%. I haven't even looked at release dates. Basically, you take it as it comes, you know, like try to figure out what kind of bugs, what works, what goes in, what new moves they added. Like this year, I heard they're adding where you can take total control of the keepers, which has been a landmark for PC gaming. The last two years, you've had full control over the keepers. So if I thought you were going to shoot to the right and I anticipated I could block it, whereas... If I couldn't move the keeper, it might just fly right in the net. For the upcoming year, you know, I just hope that there's a lot of events and gives me a lot of opportunities and I get some more wins. You know, I really do hope that for the World Finals, they open up another spot for the United States. But if not, I mean, I think you've got nothing to be ashamed of. You've been doing a great job. Yep, thank you guys so much for having me on the show. And I've been, yeah, I mean, I've been podiuming them a lot this year, and I hope that I get another opportunity to compete before uh, before FIFA 10 dies, but I'm ready and looking forward to moving on to FIFA 11 for the upcoming season. Well, this brings us to our third and final guest for this evening's show. We are joined by our very own former Rhythm Gaming Manager, before he was promoted, a member of the rock band Adrenaline, who does weekly downloadable content reviews uh, in their weekly blog, and also is a Guitar Hero player, and that is why he was at the World Cyber Games Nationals. So, Brock, welcome to the show. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. So tell us, uh, wow, a lot of surprises, <laughs> no Smoky Prague. This was a different Guitar Hero tournament in a lot of ways. Tell us, take us on a journey. How was it? It was definitely uh, definitely interesting like you said not having Smokey there was definitely weird especially since he was the favorite I'd say going in to win the entire thing that certainly came as a surprise to everyone it was very very cool though to have uh, five out of the nine Guitar Hero players there for WCG so I was pretty confident going in that VVV would perform pretty well and we did break it down where did everybody from VVV Gaming uh, land uh, for those who may not already know, I know everybody probably knows number two and three, but let everybody know where our uh, players all ended up. As most people know, VVV Asai 28 uh, got second and NPG 09 got third. Our other rhythm gamers that were there, uh, Hell Ashes and Ganon Met, they both tied for fifth place. They both went two and two in their bracket, and I went and took seventh place and went one and three, even though... I guess technically my only win was against Smokey Prog, who was a no-show. But still, I mean, it's a win. I'll, I'll take it, I guess. <laughs> no, you don't have to be ashamed of a, of a no-show. Uh, and certainly for VV Gaming, that would have ended up uh, either way, I guess, meaning that uh, if you had not gotten the win, someone from VV Gaming would have still gotten the win. But uh, tell us a little bit more about the road for Asai, which I think was really a surprise. Asai, oh, man. Um well, he was definitely dominant, I guess. During group play, out of his three matches, he only ended up losing one song. He was uh, best three out of five for each match, for all three of his matches. And he went 3-0 against Hell Ashes, went 3-0 against Schmeggery. And uh, up on the main stage, I actually played him in a best of five, and I managed to take one song from him. But needless to say, he pretty easily took the other three songs from me in front of everyone. It was a little embarrassing, but he definitely deserved it after all the time that he put in. 
Yeah, Asai definitely had a really great showing at WCG. Lots of really great matches. One in particular got a lot of buzz about it, and that was on the final day where they were doing the finals matches. There was a match between himself and Mob Shift. Both of them had lost their very first match in the Final Four, which was really shocking since they had both been so dominant in group play that one of them was going to be eliminated and put into fourth place. That was just absolutely unheard of. The way that that turned out, very shocking. This match went 3-2 from what I understood. Two incredible songs being double F-seed. Can you give us a little bit more detail, what you saw, how that turned out, uh, maybe even the players' mindsets during the, um, during the match between the two of them? Well, everyone there was definitely uh, surprised to, to see them in the loser's bracket because both Mob Shift and Asai28 were both undefeated during group play. So just to see them in the loser's bracket was definitely shocking. When it came time for the match, I mean, we knew it would definitely be uh, an interesting match. Uh, certainly two of the top players there. A lot of people expected these two to go on and represent Team USA in the World Finals, but they both lost pretty early on. So... When the match came, the first song went to, I believe it went to Shift, and I can't remember the song it was, but the second song was the one that definitely made people talk, and it was definitely the most exciting match of WCG for Guitar Hero, definitely. The second song was Scatterbrain, and for anyone who's played Guitar Hero 5 knows that Scatterbrain is definitely the hardest song in the entire game. So when the song started, harder parts at the beginning, of course, both Shift and Asai were uh, FCing uh, all the parts and they're getting through all the tough stuff. Same exact score for a lot of the way through the song. And then uh, Asai moved ahead just by a very small number of points. When he gets to the end, both players had FC'd the song and Asai had taken the win by under 200 points. For anyone who knows how scoring working Guitar Hero works, that's less than one note under star power. So Asai had barely moved ahead just in that one song. And then later on in the match, there was the tiebreaker. Each player had won two songs, so it moved on to a random tiebreaker, and the song was Demons. And sure enough, uh, both Asai and Chip FC'd the song again, and again, Asai moved ahead by under 200 points. And I'm a little upset that I didn't get the uh, matches on video. I wish I did, but it was such an exciting match, and for Asai to pull ahead, and at that point assure himself top three top uh top three in the tournament it was an exciting moment you know and to think that he marched through to get back into the grand finals and he faces an opponent that he just did really well against in many ways and i heard it was an epic battle tell us about the grand final match grand final match was as epic as the first loser's bracket one was definitely uh, he battled, Asai battled his way through the loser's bracket. He beat uh, VVV and PG09, who was knocked down in the loser's bracket by Schmeggery. He beat NPG by a score of 3-1. to one. So then we move on to the grand finals against Schmeggery. Uh, <laughs> Schmeggery, in the past, he's had a lot of bad luck when it comes to major tournaments. It seems like every tournament he comes within one spot of making the money. So he was determined at this point to bring his A-game and try to win one for a change. Asai, I remember, they're on the main stage, and Asai picks the first song, Scatterbrain. At this point, everyone knows that Asai can do pretty well in the song, considering he just FC'd it against Shift, and he goes on to FC it again against Schmeggery. Schmeggery did not have one of his better matches, so Asai was up one nothing. Schmeggery picks his song. He did not do so well. Once again, Asai wins. He's up 2 nothing, and then uh, Asai picks his third song, which is Done With Everything, Die For Nothing, which is probably the second most difficult song uh, after Scatterbrain, and he wins it and goes ahead 3 nothing. So he wins the first match, but of course now he has to beat him again since Schmeggery had not lost. Now we're in the grand finals. First three matches, Schmeggery actually pulls ahead 2-1, to one, which actually shocks everyone, including the announcers and everyone in the stands because they expected Asai to just like pull away with the victory pretty easily after the last match. The fourth song, which Megri up two to one, was Sultans of Swing. This match, uh, it was really painful to watch. Smeggery had made a mistake in the middle of the star power about two notes early, and that gave Asai about a 400-point lead, so he could pretty much just coast through the end of the song because it's an easy song. 
there's only one uh, star power activation left, and that's at the very end of the song. Unfortunately, Asai activates just a tad early, and because of that, he misses the very last note of the song under star power, and Shmurgy was able to get six, gain 600 points on him and move ahead by under 200 points, and that was enough to take the grand uh, championship from Asai. Wow. When we picked up Asai, you know, we he really surpassed I, my expectations. I don't know how you guys felt, but I thought that he might break top four. But for him to come into second place, it just, you know, I know his parents are proud. I just think it was awesome for Asai, to be honest. Yeah, completely. I've got to be honest. Alec Castillo, also known as VV Asai 28, he has one of the nicest families out there and this could not happen to a greater family. They've been so supportive of him and in a way this family is I guess you could say exactly what a gaming family should look like. They support him so much and I really think this couldn't happen to a better set of people so huge congrats to Alec. He did wonderful and I can't wait to see him represent Team USA at the Grand Finals since his his second place finish at the Nationals does entitle him to represent Team USA. It's great stuff. Congratulations, VVSI. For the players that didn't make to the WCG Grand Finals in LA, what would be next for like for Guitar Hero tournaments for Guitar Hero players? Well, the next tournament, actually, the Midnight Gaming Championship. Um, the qualifiers are taking place now. There are some LAN qualifiers and there's some online qualifiers, and that's a pretty major tournament. I know. How it is, there's all the online and land qualifiers. From there, we take uh, the top 32 people, which is the winner from each qualifier, and they get put into a 32-man single elimination bracket. The first two rounds are uh, done online to get it down to the top eight. And from there, the top eight actually get flown to Las Vegas to compete in the finals. The first place winner of that actually wins $5,000 in cash. Well, Brock, it's my understanding that you took about uh, 300 pictures and a ton of video, and you even mm-hmm. borrowed someone else's camera to finish that video. Is that true? Well, that's true. My camera definitely definitely did some work this weekend. Yeah, I have over 300 pictures, a couple dozen videos, so they should definitely be up. They should probably be up now by the time people are listening to this, actually. Awesome, Brock. Well, let me tell you, Doomhammer and I do this uh, every event that we go to, and uh, it's like the work doesn't stop because – not only were you working at the event, you work as soon as you come home just to get it all up and sort of show the world. So I know how much goes into this. I want to thank you so much, Brock, for your work. Thanks for having me, guys. And now we shift our focus to Major League Gaming. And obviously what is, if not on everyone's console, certainly uh, has been the talk of the town, Halo Reach. Let's start with you, Mr. Perilous. I see you've been playing a lot of Reach. Talk yeah. to me. What do you think? I really, really enjoy this game. I mean, it's got so many, you know, ah, so much features. So I beat the campaign, you know, on the Legendary five hours because I wanted to finish the story. Or not finish the story, start the story, to be honest. If you haven't played it, you'll get what I'm talking about later. And uh, so we beat that around 5, probably 5.15 in the morning. Then we started playing some matchmaking. I really love... Uh, they brought back Ascension. They brought back some Halo 2 classic maps and Halo 1 classic maps with Blood Gulch. It's called Hemorrhage now, I think. Oh, I mean, it's there's so much potential in this game. I, it's honestly like everyone on the, is just waiting for the MLG settings so they can start practicing the maps and stuff. And that's that's where we're all at at this point. Like you can still play and have fun right now. Once MLG settings, business, right? I know, Justin. What do you think? Story wise. I thought it was really good. It played really well. I like how they incorporated your colors and emblem into the character for the main story. Um, that firefight was really good, except they made it a little too easy with all the settings that you can change, um, because getting those achievements only took me an hour. Multiplayer, though, I thought it's really great, but a lot of the maps aren't too competitive, honestly. They're a lot, like, I don't know, they're kind of poorly created, honestly. Luckily, this Forge World allows players to create maps, and already people have been going to town on making old-school Halo 3, Halo 2, Halo 1 maps. So I've been testing a lot of those out, and um, a lot of us have just been testing out settings to see what would work well for MLG and stuff to see how it's going to play. I think it'll play really well if done right. Um, There's a lot of things that hopefully don't make it in MLG, like a lot of people are trying to put Evade in MLG. I wouldn't see that working out too well after testing it out for a little bit. 
also the the armor thing like armor lock and sprint you don't need those in MLG. Um, other than that, it plays really well. Um, shots connect. It's not you don't have to lead your shots as much anymore, uh, and people actually die and all shots register off post as well. So I think it plays really well so far. It's just amazing. Yeah, I have to agree with you. Uh, I'm gonna say that this is the first Halo that really connected with me. I mean, when I picked it up. You know, I didn't get it to it until about 1 in the morning, and uh, believe it or not, me and Doomhammer did split screen, mostly because, I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting much. I mean, I, I wasn't a big fan of Halo 3 at all. I liked Halo 2. I obviously really liked Halo 1. But, you know, nothing sold me. But here, from the very beginning, I felt that the aiming mechanism, the way it feels, is accurate, sharp. I love the pistol. You know, that those are the first impressions are using the assault rifle and then switching to the pistol, you know, reloading and looking at the timing. And this is obviously playing campaign. Uh, also on Legendary, probably a lot of us have the same traditions. You know, I put it on Legendary, finish that, and I start multiplayer. But I didn't play a lot of Halo 3. I mean, I, the game just didn't sit well with me. But this, this really feels good. Like it feels the accuracy, the the way the shots register. You know, I can agree with the sprint and the armor lock, even though I think they're not bad features. I think there could be some really interesting moments where armor lock might be good. But, you know, I, I, I suspect the competitive community probably doesn't need it. But it certainly isn't as goofy as, you know, that bubble shield from Halo 3, to be honest. Yeah, but you haven't got to the part where you get a drop shield now instead of a bubble shield for the yeah, armor. Yeah, but, I mean, I, I'm you know... Yeah, that's that's true. I, I don't I don't feel like any of those are necessary in the competitive uh, aspect of the game. Um, I'm like I said, waiting really waiting for you know maps and settings to come out, and that's where we really can go to town on talking and discussing. But right now, like I said, it's all about having fun. So you know, use your jetpacks, your sprints, uh, anything and everything that you want right now, because uh, probably when it comes to the competitive, don't hold your breath on having those. What I was glad about is that um, MLG sat and looked at what Shadowrun was back in the day with the Bloom feature and everything, and they actually incorporated that into this game. With that, it allows people to not spam buttons anymore like they used to. Like, you know, a lot of people just like to spam the R trigger. Well, in this game, that's not going to help you. You have to be actually accurate and precise with timing to actually kill somebody now. So that's really good considering you won't die as much to people that don't really know how to play the game. Absolutely. I agree with you 100%. That is one of those features that, again, I think MLG's influence made it a better game. So I'm telling anybody out there, I look forward to the release of Gears of War 3, and I look forward to exploring Medal of Honor and Black Ops. But if you're not getting Halo Reach because of Halo 3, you're making a mistake. Halo Reach is a better game. It is a different game in many ways. And if you think you are a good, accurate player, and you know what I mean when I say this, you get tired of getting bullshitted, I recommend you pick up Reach. You're going to be pleasantly surprised. Yeah, there's a lot less bullshit. I would feel, I, I do feel that as of right now, uh, grenades are a little strong. Even though they were, they were stronger in the beta, they did nerf them a little bit. I think they need a little bit more tweaking. Rockets are kind of ridiculous if you have if you get to use those. Also, guaranteed, like, just after using it for a little bit, I have a feeling that MLG won't put the shotgun in the game. In, oh, into God, settings. no. No, no, Way no, no, no shotgun. Uh, I agree with the grenades. I mean, I think they should stay. I, You know, this is one of those situations where it reminds me of the challenges of Gears of War. You know, you really wish that out of the box it would be slightly different. Um, so I do think grenades are going to be a slight problem. But, you know, at the end of the day, not a, not, not a breaker or anything. But, yeah, no shotgun. Even with the overpowered grenades, like, all they can, all they really have to do, to be honest, is change it from starting with two to starting with one, and that'll be perfectly fine. It's just those two grenades to start. Like, sometimes they're just, like, six grenades get flown at you, and it's just ridiculous. You know what I do like now is that what Bungie incorporated with this game, unlike any other Halo is that now in MLG, this could be useful because if there's a grenade, like two frag grenades sitting on the ground, and somebody goes to walk over them, you can shoot that frag grenade, and it will blow up and severely injure that player. So I think that will also prove costly in games as well for MLG. 
Now, does it work the same for plasma grenades if you shoot? Yes. Plasma okay. grenades are the same thing. I've been testing that out for a while. That's a really good feature then. Ah, that, like I said, reach. Amazing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't want to, like, it's not the most amazing thing to ever happen, but I want to make it clear that if you think reach was going to be bad, I really recommend that you give it a look because it's not bad. This brings me to what I want to talk about tonight, gentlemen. Let me get this off my chest. By the time this podcast comes out, you'll have probably already looked at our latest geek to me article. Uh, and I want to really, for those of you that, you know, don't read uh, or may miss that article, I want to capture the themes that I talked about in it. Anybody out there who is thinking about getting into competitive gaming, now is the time. This is the absolute golden era of competitive gaming. It is upcoming. We have Halo Reach, a solid, precise, competitive title, which will hopefully invigorate uh, the Halo 2 fanboys who maybe didn't like Halo 3 so much and really solidify the Halo community around this title. That's just the beginning. We're looking at a lot of positive stuff for Black Ops. Medal of Honor, if you haven't seen what has gone into developing Medal of Honor, I highly recommend you look at the development videos. The amount of time they spent with actual special forces in their studios, people from the field in Afghanistan that came to help make sure that Medal of Honor was going to be an accurate game. And you can say what you want about DICE and what they did with Bad Company 2. I think the actual engine is going to serve Medal of Honor very well. And last but not least, Gears of War 3 coming in April. If Major League Gaming has it their way, I expect Major League Gaming and Epic to have some serious conversation about making sure that Gears of War can be on the circuit. I think 2011 could be a, a just a breakout year. There are a phenomenal number of titles coming out that are very competitive, and this is your opportunity to get into gaming. So it doesn't matter if you like Gears of War or Halo or Call of Duty. There are so many games that you can pick up, start learning, and hopefully get into competitive gaming as a player. And if not, this is also a great time to be getting in as a fan. There is so much media that covers competitive gaming. You have Major League Gaming. You have Live on 3 every Sunday by DJ Wheat. Obviously, you're already listening to this show. There are many ways for you to be involved in competitive gaming, and now is the time to do it. So if any of you out there have been disillusioned because Gears of War 2 isn't your game, or Halo 3 didn't go the way you want, or Modern Warfare 2 was a broken, glitch-ridden game that got hacked, for all those disappointments, I look at Halo Reach like a sort of beacon. It sort of lets us know that good things are to come. That brings us to the end of the 34th round of the Loser's Bracket. As always, I want to thank our VV sponsors, Steel Series, Control Freak, MusicSkins.com, and Custom Inc. I want to thank the VV community for your feedback and support. I want to give a shout-out to Sundance Giovanni, the CEO of Major League Gaming. I really appreciate you reaching out and talking to us. I really mean it. And I want to remind everybody to stop over. Remember, our podcast has a new website, vvgaming, all one word, dot podbean, dot com. You can follow our shows there. Also, you can email us at thelosersbracket at vvv-gaming.com. That's the losers bracket, Or follow us on Twitter, and there we're just known as Losers Bracket. So all of those are ways to follow the show, get in touch with us. And if you have comments, suggestions, feedback, please let us know. We're here for your comments. Thanks a bunch for listening, guys. We'll see you next week. Take care. Take care.